Hey guys, it's Terry here from Charter Made, and in today's video, I'm going to be covering the basic tools you're going to need to get started in leatherwork. Selecting your first tools for your leather craft definitely comes down to the types of projects you want to start with. So in today's video, I'm going to be covering the tools that are going to be required to get some nice basic projects out. Um, I do have a full PDF of this, how to make this wallet on my website as well. So I'm going to be covering the tools to make projects like this, beginner projects. So what I'm going to do is show you how to use all of these tools on a project that you can actually make. So I've got my pattern, this is printed on a firmer piece of cardboard and the first thing I want to do is I need to mark that onto the piece of leather that I'm using and that's where a scratch rule comes in handy, especially if you're using vegetable tanned leathers which are great leathers to start with. Uh, so a scratch rule, these are readily available and I will be putting descriptions of all the tools that I use uh, uh, below so that you'll have a, a list of what to get. So a scratch rule, I'll put my, my pattern down onto my piece of leather and then using my scratch all, I will mark around that pattern. Marked out the pattern using my scratch all, you're going to need some sort of a knife. So now I'll cut through that leather and a cutting mat. So I've got a green cutting mat that's commonly available at any sewing store or craft store. And this is an alpha blade. If you're going to use one of these clicker blades, it's obviously cheap knives to get started. The alpha one is really good. absolutely essential piece of equipment is a stainless steel ruler. I have one that works in both centimeters, millimeters, and in inches. Now the reason why you want a steel ruler is because if you're using a plastic ruler, your knife can dip in and cut into that ruler, destroying a piece of leather and a ruler. Snap off more regularly than not. Uh, having a really sharp knife is obviously a lot safer to use. So now in the card pocket there is a curve, so a lot of you will know me as the designer and maker behind that knife, called the pattern knife, which excels at freehand curve cutting. But because today is a beginner project, I'm going to be cutting with this knife. I'm going to do my best to, to try and get a nice curve. Next up, cutting curves. Easy way to do this, get some coins, some washers, and you're good to go. Quick tip on cutting curves. Put your blade next to, this, uh, next to the side, push the washer or coin or whatever you're using up close to it, do it the same on the opposite side, and now you know your edge is even on both sides. Something I've noticed a lot of guys battling with when they're trying to get these curves is they try to get a, a uniform cut going around the curve. Uh, it's quite tricky to do that, so you don't need to do that. Just cut multiple cuts up nice and close to your round and what you'll have there is a perfect round. A tool that really finishes off your edges uh, of any project that you're doing is called an edge beveler. Depends on the size of them but it removes a portion of the leather on the edges giving it a nice rounded uh, um, look to the edge profile. A really nice way to finish off your edges is by burnishing them. There is a full video on this channel about how I burnish edges, or at least how, uh, at least one of the ways you can burnish edges. It can be done with a bone folder. These are really good items to have. Get yourself one if you don't have one. Or a specified edge slicker. I made this myself. Um, they're not too difficult to make, but they are readily available in today's times. If you only have a bone folder, or well, at least a, a proper bone folder. What I did many years ago is I used a Dremel and I cut a groove into the bone folder over there. So that actually works just as well for burnishing up the edges.
Guys, I'm using Ceragum glue. It comes from Rocky Mountain Leather Supply. I really love this glue. I used contact adhesive for years. Um, this just dries quicker. It doesn't smell. Uh, it's, a good, it's a good glue. I use a paddle though. I don't use a brush. Um, so if you're going to use this glue, use a paddle. Great starter tool to have. Stitching groover. I don't, however, use the attachment that cuts a groove into the leather, but most of these stitching groovers come with a like a little pedal plate, um, which is really nice for marking the width of your stitch line. So I'm going to use it for that in this project. To make the holes that I'm going to be stitching, I'm going to use something called a stitching iron. Now these are very basic and affordable uh, stitching irons, and like everything in the craft, you do get more expensive, better performing or high, high performance items. Um, so I'm using basic affordable ones today. I have slightly customized these though. Obviously to use on your tools, you're wanting a, uh, a hammer that's going to work. Um, if you've got a hammer at home that's got a steel face, please don't use it. You'll damage the back of your tools. Um, the only two types of hammers I'll use is either a mallet style, which will have a soft type of a compound for the for the face, or I'll use a copper a copper faced hammer. Um, these also work really nice. Copper works really nice, but uh, it's also a lot heavier to work with. Don't use a steel hammer. I'm punching onto a piece of uh, rubber, so it's a very dense, hard rubber. It gives a it's nice and easy to punch the tools on too. Starter leatherwork projects are generally made with a bigger stitch. Um, so the needles I recommend, 002 by John James. I only use two sizes. I use a 004 when I'm stitching very small and I use a 002 for bigger stitching. Thread scissors. To hold your work in place and get really nice looking stitching, you're going to need something called a stitching pony. That's what this is. It's, it's, a, it's a clamping device really, so that will just pop inside there and I have a bolt that holds the whole lot together. This is a homemade one. Um, when I started with leatherwork many years ago, there weren't the tools readily available as there are today. Uh, but you can purchase these now or make yourself one. But you definitely need something to hold your work in place uh, while you stitch. There is a full video on saddle stitching up on the channel, so you can go look at that on, on how to saddle stitch uh, leather. So I'm going to stitch this up. To tap down my threads, I use the I use a polished faced uh, hammer. If you don't have a knife that will allow you to do this, an uh, easy way to uh, help with your folds is just to put a little bit of water down. So you just dampen that center spot where you want the fold and uh, then it'll help with that as well. It'll soften that leather to you. If you are going to get yourself a set of these uh, more economical priced irons, uh, spend some time with some sandpapers and get these teeth polished up. It's going to take you a little bit of time, but it's going to help it come out the leather a lot quicker. Definitely worth doing it though. Okay, so you have it. Card pocket on the one side only, with a nice pouch on the inside. Card pocket on both sides. You can do both with the, the full pattern is on my website though, with detailed instructions on how to make it. So as you've just seen, with some basic tools and a little bit of effort, you can really make yourself something nice, or even make something nice as a gift for a friend. So I hope you've got some value out of this video. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up below. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos. We are adding to the channel constantly. 
So I look forward to seeing you on the next video.